already some rumors out there that Matt Patricia could take over and succeed Bill Belichick. Josh McDaniels going pow, mad as hell. Let's talk about these rumors. Make sure you guys check out Detroit Lions Talk playlist. Share the video. And uh, let me pull it up. That would be stupid. Would he run that same stupid ass defense Bill Belichick run? He just, Big Belichick just not already perfected, you know? So, uh, let me, you know. Patriots appear to be grooming Matt Patricia for a major role. The former Lion head, head coach seems to be ready to thrive and is returning new, returning to New England. He said, when we last checked in on former Detroit Lions head coach Matt Patricia, he had an uns, uns, unspecified, I hate saying that word, unspecified job back Pacific, I can say Pacific, I don't know why that word. I don't know. Job back with New England Patriots, whose duties include signing players' contracts as a Patriots representative and even taking a big part of the pre-draft evaluation. Ben Vile of the Boston Globe has since done some digging into Patricia's new role with his former team, and he suggests Patricia's future with the organization may be headed towards a much bigger role. Though, sorry. Though Patricia official title remains undefined, he's still not listed on the Patriots official website. Violet notes that his duties have been expanded. He he was seen teaching alongside head coach Bill Belichick during week's OTAs and was even teaching technique to some of the defensive linemen during the drills. He was reportedly working the phone during the draft too. put it all together. And sure, sound, sounds like Patricia is on a fast track for a much higher position originally believed. Quote, Josh McDaniel, Steve Belichick, and Gerard Mayo, used to be linebacker, are all discussed as potential heirs to Bill Belichick. It's, it is Patricia's who look as though he is being groomed for a major role, even either in the coaching or in the front office, violent posts. The Patriots have re recently lost two key players in the front office. They're a long time. Jack of all trades, director of player Nick Casario, whatever he went to the Texans, and their director of football, do me research Ernie Adams, who announced 2021 draft would be his last with the team, though it's unclear if Adams retiring outright. What is clear is that Patricia is, is picking up at least some of the slack left by their departures. He's adding to the front office experience, including contract negotiation and draft preparation to his resume while continuing to have his hand in coaching. Does it mean that he's the next next Belichick in Foxborough or will he become Belichick's right-hand man like Casario and Adams in the past? Uh, at the end of the day, man, just let you know that, um, you know, certain coaches, I'm going to go ahead and say it, white coaches are going to land on their feet. A lot of black coaches, man, got to start back from the bottom, but ultimately he doesn't have a defined role. In the way I look at it, man, who freaking cares, man? Uh, Josh McDaniels looking for a big role, too. You know, Patricia going to the front office. You know, him and Bob Quinn kind of had some clashes here on the players he wanted. He wanted that defensive tackle that went to Carolina. And obviously, Bob Quinn got his way while picking uh, Jeff Okuda, which neither one of them had big years, you know, but so you have to be seen where they going to be successful, even though they was in a, a year last year where, you know, honestly, they had to uh, win now and it didn't work. I thought if Galilee was still healthy last year, I literally thought, I legit thought they would have made the playoffs because they would have beat the Bears twice. And they would have been in the playoffs, okay? And remember, they added a team. But um, obviously, man, Patricia run that same dumbass defense. I don't think Patricia has the social skills to be a coach. When you tell the players to stop sucking other players' cocks, I just don't think he has the social skills. And I think more than likely, he's going to be probably in the front office. And there's some things to be learned in the front office, man, because you've seen with him and Bill Bob Quinn, they sucked their drafting player. Him and Bill Belichick. You know, ultimately, man, Bill Belichick track record ain't good drafting players neither. Y'all can look it up for yourself, you know. And I've been told y'all that. Bill Belichick can't fucking draft to save his life. Now, later in the middle round draft, he hit on that. And the same thing with Bob Quinn. Bob Quinn had a lot of misses too. But he hit in the, on Galilee, he hit with a couple other dudes. You know, ultimately, you know, when the board is in, is wide open, and you know, you know, that showed him you could draft a lot better. When you condense the board, uh, you know, start to, you know, consolidate the choices, of course you can start seeing talent step out. And for Troy Weaver, not Troy Weaver, Jesus, he too. Shout out to Troy Weaver, Detroit Pistons, he doing his thing. But for, I got to do Detroit Pistons live. But for Brad Holmes, you know, we'll see. We'll see, you know, this year, next year, three years down the line, we got to see what his draft is looking like. But, you know, ultimately, Matt Patricia, I wish him nothing but the best. Um, 
Hopefully he can bounce back quicker to dribble. But Josh McDaniel's been a guy that, you know, had a head coaching job and, you know, didn't go as well. Another guy that lacked the social skills to get this team over the hump. But, you know, I can see Beth Patricia, you know, getting back in the coach. And I can see Patricia, you know, getting into the front office as well, too. So I never can see him doing this thing there. But, you know, when you're talking about front office, you're talking about system fit. You're talking about, a, you know, social fit. And you're talking about you got to draft the right way. You know, you think it ain't guys, you know, NFL and, you know, all around sports that if they would have dra been drafted instead of Miami and they've been drafted to Detroit, that it would have worked. Yeah, organizations fuck up draft picks too, excuse my language. But, you know, for him, I don't got no ill will towards him. You know, you got ill will towards him. You got ill will towards Steve Mariozzi, Ryan Marinelli. There's a lot of coaches that came before they couldn't get the job done. And really, what it's up to is the organization. You know, Mr. Ford and Miss and Martha Ford and now uh, she, excuse me, she, she, I don't know, Sheila Ford, yeah. They got to stop being cheap. You know, they got to stop being gullible. They got to find better advisors. All that going there. All that going there. And ultimately, you know, one of them could have been the great GM, but when you don't financially support a team, then it's pressure to go out there and hit a slam dunk. But, you know, ultimately for Patricia, I mean, at the end of the day, everybody deserves a second chance. Not just white coaches, black coaches, and all minority coaches deserve to be on the same playing field. But ultimately, the, the stale defense that he ran – you know, he. Just, I mean, come on, man. Bill Belichick, man. They don't believe in fast players. The reason he succeeded, the reason he succeeded in uh, New York was the defensive coordinator is because, it's simply because Lawrence Taylor. Bill Belichick like to play man to man. Don't don't blitz defense, but ultimately he know how to perfect that defense. You know, so I mean, ultimately Matt Patricia. If you're a front office guy, that's a, that's a huge change. That's a, a, a big change, a massive change, as the UK people would say. It's a huge change, and at the end of the day, you know, fuck that coaching. You got to learn the ins and outs of, you know, how to manage salary caps, how to draft players, and a lot of these a lot of these franchises don't draft at a hot clip. You know, Green Bay is able not to go out there and get a major free agent uh, because they, they draft well. They cheat, but they draft well. They find Devontae Adams, you know. They find Aaron Rodgers. They find Jordan Love if he's going to be good. They find these players, you know. And even though Aaron Rodgers is the one that, you know, put it all together and take them over the top, if they didn't draft well, they couldn't be cheap in free agency. But, hey, let me know what you guys think about it. Yeah, boy. Yeah, guy. Matt Patricia. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. All my social media links are out there. You can reach out anytime. If you want to advertise your business on the channel, video requests, you know, chop it up, whatever. Hit me up. Check out Detroit Line Salt Playlist. Want to make a financial donation. Cash App, CJ Good 313. That's in the description. PayPal link there as well, too. Best way to donate. Uh, share, share the video. But let me know what you think in the comment section. One time for the one time. Mercy Sports Talk. Don't forget to check my main, my main channel out right here on YouTube. Good Fellow Sports TV. Appreciate it. Peace. All right, all my Detroit Piston fans and all my Detroit fans, all my Motor City Sports Talk fans, make sure you guys go check out Piston Mike. We got him over 100 followers. So make sure you check him out. Everything Pistons, man. He going to hold it down and do his thing just strictly on the Pistons thing. You know, I got the lines of Pistons. But, man, we always trying to help people get their channel up. Let's get him to 200 next, 300 next, 400 next, 500 next. And let's get him all the way to a rack so he can start making that bag. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you go over to Piston Mike as you see it on the screen. Let's get him to 200, then 300, then 400, then 500, and the whole shebang. Peace.